Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about ooh ah. That's right. It is spoiler season for Notorious. The WizKids Hero Clicks page has been popping off. We're going to talk about a little bit of that. And like always, just chat and gab away in the Hero Clicks world. This is episode 481. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 East of Dead Pan Human. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Let me be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com, or you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DialH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. It does not work with pre orders or iconics, and it will not work with the new Scott Porter figure coming out later this week. Very sad. Well, I know. There, there is a Scott Porter code. There is, That'll that is true. That is 5% off, so I can't remember what the name of it is. But it's $5 off, just straight oh, up is five it just bucks. Oh, it's $5 off? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. that one's, uh, it's like Scott Porter 2023. I, I want to say, something. yeah. It's something also, real long. They're calling out Scott. They're like, Scott's wearing white after Labor Day, everybody. How dare he? I was like, whoa. <laughs> As if it was his choice. Whoa. Yeah. You put him in the white shirt here. He is a proud union member standing with yeah. the, the actors and actresses over at the SAG after picket line after he got done with his vacation of right, course right. but now now he's now he's all now we're good Jordan Lake always is Simeon Simeon Bruce what's going on Simeon uh, I demand a recount Calder that's what's a going recount. on a recount yeah what uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, the goon course. off yeah that's right that was a right. rigged voting mechanism I what? do not believe polar bears should win over not just the gorillas but the OG goons Okay. The Manta goons. Now, There's so many cool goons. Tell me, generic polar bear. I, I He's do not agree. even a true goon. <laughs> Does Mr. Freeze actually employ polar bears? No, I guess. <laughs> Probably not, I guess. Are these intelligent bears from the, like, the north? I don't know how, how smart the bears are. They could be mm. pretty clever. I hear animals are smarter That's than, you, true. than you think. Yeah. Uh, I, they're probably not as smart as a Gorilla City soldier, though. Right. Gorilla City soldiers are pretty smart. Yeah. Sapiens. You know, I will say, overall, Goon off, I don't think the polar bear should have won. I think it should have went to Goon or, or Weaponer of Cord or uh, Thunderer of Cord. Yeah, for sure. Um, I will say, versus the Gorilla City, I was, I was going for polar bear. So I'm okay with that matchup winning. But overall, we'll have to see. We'll have to do our own Goon off with yeah. real figures. Very similar to the never finished sidekick off <laughs> yeah, the, of Wonder Woman 80th, where we just took all of the sidekicks and the one captain or their like leader esque character, and we had them all fight. So we'll probably do that again with the goons. Yeah. Who did you so, vote for down the line? Because I, I okay. went OG goon versus Gorilla City. I went OG goon. I did the same there. I did OG goon as well. Versus White Gorilla Rabbit City. versus Joker goon. I voted for White Rabbit as well. Okay. I also Joker. voted for White Rabbit yep. because. I just think the the like little like hands clasped and the creepy mask. I love the rabbit mask. Yeah, the rabbit mask is cool. Very cool. As opposed to like, I get the Joker goons Joker classic fish. though. Yeah. Big fish, pretty funny. Um, the Riddler versus Riddler goon versus Black Manta goon. I had no dog in that fight. I I didn't really either. I didn't care much about Riddler or Black Manta. I did no. go with Black Manta goon. I thought he was like, oh, he's kind of funny. He's, he's like got some guns. Or something. I don't know what the yellow like. It reminds me of that big yellow flashlight that people sell, keep in their car. Oh yeah, they yeah. used to keep in their car that like thing. The like yeah, the, the like two thousand ten dollars spotlight. You yeah, get at, well, like, that a spotlight gas yeah. station. Um, polar bear versus weapon or cord was hard because I'd rather polar bear win that one than weapon or cord, but at least weapon or cord makes sense as like a goon. To me, that is true. And he's holding the lightning bolt, so it's he's got like you know the Rocket Man aesthetic with a lightning bolt. It's a cool sculpt, but I did actually vote Polar Bear in that one, I think. And then, oh really? I see. I was I was all Thunder Accord. Okay, I was going for Thunder Accord. I think he got a lot of hate because of how much people know they're going to see him. Probably once this set comes out. Probably like the, the cheapest lantern option. I won't lie. The big polar bear is so cool. It is, but like definitely the core is better. Like he's the top tier goon compared yeah. to just the polar bear. 
Uh, overall, if it had been if it had been OG goon versus white rabbit goon, I think I would have gone OG goon. Just because I think I, OG I think, goon should have taken it. Yeah, I think it's, overall he's the goon. Yeah, and he doesn't make it to round he's got two. Money the, bag, go, he's the got goon a, tournament. He knows who he is. He wears it on oh, his yeah. not sleeve but chest. Yeah, like yeah, definitely think he should have been uh, in the top list. So we got well, actually, before we get into our like news here. Let's uh, let's do what made us happy this week. What made you happy this week, my man? Ooh, I went to Hutch Fest today. So it's a brand new festival in Omaha. It was downtown. It was actually in a section of downtown I've been to plenty of times, but never like the old market. On foot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, uh, not really. So um, just north of like the stadium, which I can't the baseball ever, stadium. Yeah, I can't oh, okay. remember the name of the stadium because it's changed names like twice. It's not Wrigley Field, but that'd be funny if it was. Uh, it's just north of there in like what I call like the dead warehouse district because it's all these old warehouses that you assume are just empty. A lot of, uh, a lot of just construction piles of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like hanging out. 90% broken windows, but apparently some of them still used for storage, which is funny. Okay. okay. Uh, mostly wood storage, which was mind blowing oh. to me. I was walking through some of them and I was like, this is just like a it's lot just, of oak. Just a lot, a lot of, of cedar. A lot of wood here. Like, this is some expensive wood to just like be housing for no apparent reason because it's hmm. not like there's a storefront that sells it um but yeah hutch fest not not a lot of hutches for sale what's a hutch um I had, like a curio a cabinet is that what that is i don't okay. know is it i, I so <laughs> it's mini mini side tangent which won't be long at all growing up one of the closest towns that's 10 miles away of course uh growing up we had a Hutch's Cafe. So that's mm. what a Hutch is to me. It's just Hutch's Cafe, which is just some dude's last name. Okay. So I don't know what an actual Hutch is. I thought it was just <laughs> like a, a German last name or something. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know for sure. But what I will say is uh, I definitely think that there was few and far between Hutches to be found at this. It was a uh, who's who of like made in Omaha. So specifically businesses and products that are like local to Omaha. So there was a um, guy that had honey. His like shop is here in Omaha, but his honey farm is in Bellevue. Mm. Uh, there is a lot of like food vendors that are obviously they, whether it's just a food truck or they have an actual brick and mortar place. Okay. They're like Omaha based. So there's a lot of stuff like that. And then there's a lot of people that I'll say most of the vendors I would say are probably primarily online. A lot of boutiques. Oh, sure. The, the first ever couple of like bus, like boutique buses, where it's like Ooh. their whole store fits in a bus, and you just like walk in and okay. like walk through the bus and like. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of fun. So it's like, yeah, we bring climb the up store in to and... you, something like that. I don't know. That's kind of cool. It was. Uh, those were really cool. There was one extremely those cool are, bus. Those are popular at rodeos. Yeah, I see usually one or two of those at rodeos a lot. So that's yeah, pretty they cool. they have they bring one out to like junk stock. Oh, that makes sense. Out west Omaha sometimes, too. That's like Elkhorn. Not really Omaha, but uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. There was a lot of stuff to look at. Surprisingly large amount of candles. Everyone oh. thinks they know People how to, like, love, love to make candles. Their candles. I'm like, okay. all right, you got like some wax and some essential oils. You figured, you figured out the uh, math to lure 90% of the population into your booth. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I smelled more candles today than I actually wanted I to. I believe that, yeah. How many I want to on an average? There had to have been a lot of soaps, right? Zero. A lot of soaps and a lot of candles. That was my guess. Uh, not much soaps? Not so many soaps. Huh. Um, some huh. like lotions and butters, but like, yeah, candles definitely edged everything out. And it was a hot enough day that a few of the booths, the candles were like actually liquefying oh. a little bit, which was cool. Oh, man. I did go with my sister, and I don't want to put her on blast, but... Why'd you buy so many candles, sis? <laughs> no, she, she buy just like she actually a didn't ton buy any. Oh, okay. I was hoping you would say she bought like thirty candles. It is candle related, but <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so I, I don't want to put her on blast too much because it was hot, and so like maybe it was just like the heat getting to her. Uh, she doesn't handle it as well as me. Oh sure. But we go past this booth. That's this local honey dude, the guy that like his farm is in Bellevue, his bee farm or whatever. Mm -hmm. and he actually like comes from a long line of bee farmers, which is oh, really? interesting to find out. Like my father before yeah, me. He's like, <laughs> we've had these bees for 50 generations. Oh, geez. This is the same queen they had back oh, then. Oh, God, like, a lot of bees, man. No, uh, but it was really funny. Um, 
she we're going like looking at all of his honey and stuff and then he also makes stuff out of like beeswax so he's got of course some candles and stuff and she picks up some long stemmed candles i don't know what you like ye oldy time tall candles oh sure i know what you those. mean yeah, yeah the classic yeah i don't know what that shape's called but like she picks up one of those and she's like oh what are these for are these like earwax can like the ear pulling oh, candles oh those yeah and he just kind of looks at her funny and i was like those are candle candles those and she's just like kind of like oh oh uh, okay and i was like yeah like so what they used to do back in the day is they would light these on fire and use oh, them for no, light. Oh, it's so mean. And so they could it's see stuff so at night. Mean. <laughs> and she like, at this point, like she had realized, uh, very much so that it wasn't the like homeopathic, earwax pulling candle thing. It was like, well, the the biggest giveaway is those are weird hollow tubes. Yeah. And these are not hollow. These were solid, but uh, that was really funny. These are candles. It was a fun time. The it was the first ever. Uh, Hutch Fest, and they oh, cool. co-opted it from like an old festival thing. So this is, um, there's an actual group in Omaha that's like the Made in Omaha group or something along oh, those cool. lines. Yeah, like Omaha Makers group or yeah. something. Yeah, and so they co-opted this, they took it over so that it would just be Omaha proper like stuff. Cool. So like there's a lot of farmer's markets and stuff where people can come from all over and bring yeah. like stuff from different states and stuff, but this was like... No Truly one from local. out of state, no one from, hmm. like, too far away. Like, obviously, this guy's farm is on Bellevue. Like, some it's pretty dang close, Yeah, though. some of these yeah. people probably do business in, like, Elkhorn, whatever, or, like, their shops, you know, right. on, like, the outskirts. But Omaha, Omaha as, like, a people is considered, like, pretty pretty far. Like, you almost have to get to Lincoln before people stop saying, like, yeah, I live in Omaha. Honestly, yeah. People in Fremont, like, yeah, I live it's, in Omaha. I'm like, you're 40 minutes away. <laughs> like, that's they, not people Omaha. from Fremont don't say no, that, do yeah. they? Like, it's pretty far. Fremont people are proud that they live in Fremont. I'm about to say, I hope they, I hope they are. I know county, it's Fremont County people. Five. Yeah, they're proud of that. Oh, County yeah. Five. Yeah, I'm, I'm 52. I'm pretty far down the list. Mm, I see. I see. Is that Douglas? That's Douglas is 52. Carney. Oh, oh, where you're, oh, I see. Originally, yeah. yes. Okay. I grew up in Carney County. Which, <laughs> that's right. Carney is in Buffalo County. Buffalo County is Nine County. Mm. Kearney County, just south of there, is 52. So, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Very How odd. That works. Yeah, but like the actual Fort Kearney was in Kearney County. The city of but Kearney, not the Kearney town. is like 10 miles north of where uh, the Fort Kearney was and also where the county is. <laughs> so. Interesting. That's a lot of Nebraska history. That's, yeah, I know. Hope everyone enjoyed that. We're just getting, we're just getting rolling with the Nebraska history. Oh my gosh. Oh boy, what made me happy this week? I went out and played a lot of video games this week. It was pretty it was pretty fun. I did some gambling in, in the best way possible, which is play Man vs. Machine on Team Fortress 2 and mm. pay four dollars to potentially get something worth more than four dollars. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it, it did not work. And actually the one person who I play against, he says, I hate playing Man vs. Machine. So Man vs. Machine is the like the PvE mode, player versus environment, oh, okay. instead of just like playing normal like team deathmatch or like king of the hill and stuff which is just like a normal first person shooter stuff i'm like no i want to play members machine he he hates this game mode uh but he got the item that was worth like 70 dollars nice. and i was like okay well kind of <laughs> seems like you don't have a, any reason to complain and i've so i've played this game mode i've paid four dollars to play this game mode 30 times now i'm not going to do the math but yeah. I should. I would like to get my $60, $70 item here soon. I've not yet gotten one, and he's gotten two Ooh. in the same amount of tours, and it bothers me. So I, I made $8. So my $4 turned into 8 which is fine. I was okay with it. That's, that's okay. But I want... It's the golden weapons. Those are the big drops. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what you want. And the best one is the golden frying pan, which is... Do you want to guess how much the golden frying pan is, Ooh. Simeon? So, let's, so the highest end... The most expensive gold weapon I have, or Australium, uh, is my wrench, which is $110. Uh, the wrench is only for the engineer. Right. The frying pan can be used by every single class. Oh, I thought that was like a scout only. Uh, He's baseball no. bat. Yeah, so okay. scout gets baseball bat as his stock. The, the gold frying pan is, is special just because it's gold. So usually all class melees aren't for engineer or spy because engineer needs to have a wrench to like build right. a building spy needs to have a knife to backstab you otherwise it makes no sense but anybody else is like okay i guess they can hold a bottle you know because 
Demo Man normally holds the bottle. Soldier normally has like a shovel. I guess they can both just hold a sign. You know, it's sure. like it's just kind of a generic thing hitting you. I would like to see um, the spy do like an assassination from behind with a frying pan, though. Well, he can though. Oh, because okay. with the so the golden frying pan allows you to do that. The normal oh. frying pan, no. The golden frying pan, yes. Wow. The golden frying pan also lets engineer build buildings with the golden frying pan, Whoa. which is incredible. So that knowing seems, knowing that, yeah. how expensive do you think? <sighs> So the wrench you said was one thirty. It's like one hundred and thirty ish bucks if you have like a pro kill streak and stuff on it. I'm gonna go high. I'm gonna say eight hundred dollars. That's that. So now that's the kind of thinking that you should be doing. Yeah, I will say that's nowhere near. The oh, price, okay. Um, I like that though. No, it's six thousand dollars was the last one. Six six thousand dollars. Yeah, oh. a car. So like you know half my a initial, car. My initial thought was like yeah. thirteen hundred. Oh, like, you were like that's too high. But I was like, there's no way. Like, no. Yeah. If if the wrench is only going for. Wow. Yeah. Six thousand. Yeah. I mean, it so does let you do unique things that no other. And I, and I will item say, I maybe I should have told you this, but like every time you kill somebody with it, they do turn into a gold statue on the ground. Cool. They, they, you might just touch them, which yeah. is really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's six thousand dollars. So, oh my god. So, so <laughs> the goal is obviously get that, right? Because that's yeah, yeah. like, oh man. I don't want to say how much I've spent on Team Fortress 2. We know how many hours I've spent. I definitely don't want to tell you the dollar amount I've pumped into a free game. Um, but this would, this would, uh, I will say this. Um, that would mean I played TF2 for free all those years if I got $6,000. <laughs> <Yeah. $6, laughs> break it pretty, even. Uh, it would, no, it's more than breaking even. <laughs> okay. I will okay. say it's more than breaking even. It's not as bad as you think. Um, but like that's like half a car for some that cars. Is, yeah. You know, that's like, that's a house payment and stuff you know like six thousand bucks that's yeah that's for most people i'd be that's so worried to try to, to try to trade that though, to try to sell Oof. that it's just like oh man i read this article try not to get scammed and by re read this article i mean i saw this headline and oh committed it to memory oh nice, nice uh nice, but nice. there's a Classic. it was like the headline was like csgo rookie mm. um he got like a rare drop that was like some knife that was like one in some bajillion to get yeah, and yeah 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 like it was worth i think the article said it was worth like several hundred thousand it was like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand yeah and it was like a guy who or kid i can't remember which just started playing and like i said i didn't read the article just, it might not even be real got scammed out of yeah. it maybe this is literally something that i saw <laughs> and didn't even bother reading or fact checking i just immediately thought i'd repeat it to you guys so it could be that. completely fake but I don't doubt it. That's the thing about CSGO. It's like, I don't doubt with those numbers because I've seen other numbers for CSGO. They are pretty and high. And like, I've seen really like high. stories about scammers stealing like, you know, legendary weapons. Not yeah. legendary, like legendary skins because the weapon doesn't change, but the skin right. does. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I know about those games. I, man. Let, you me, know it's, let me not, tell you about my, probably move, my uh, move into hero clicks, but uh, best okay mobile game oh geez of all time. This is scary. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, thank you. I've had too many mobile ads lately. You've had a lot. What's the one that's been like popping off the most? Um, Epic Slug, Ultimate Slug. Something I have seen snail? a bunch of these snail Magic slug snail man. I've seen a bunch of those. Even That's, I've seen those on like Instagram and stuff. Yeah, that one keeps popping up everywhere I go. And like I was so close to downloading it, and I was like, don't yeah. do it. Don't do those it. are always the worst. If they have that much money to pump into like advertising, the game is probably just like a paywall thing. Mm. And maybe I'm wrong, but yeah. But Simi, mean, you can upgrade your snail from level zero to like level 100 <laughs> demon get, snail or get robo the rainbow snail. gold snail. Ooh. You could actually sell that on <laughs> online for uh, five dollars. Sell, sell the account. The um, one thing I, I found out is that I actually, you don't own any Valve games. Mm. This is really interesting. You, you are like, you are like renting them or like you're, you're leasing them. You're almost. leasing them. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't own the game, but you have like a license to play it or something. Right. I think it's actually what you own. You're buying like so the like, ability to play it. And so, so yeah, they can revoke it. At that, <laughs> that also being a thing means you don't, te like I don't technically own anything in my backpack for Team Fortress 2. Yeah. Which I won't lie really it's scares terrifying. me yeah it actually does terrify <laughs> me there are like things there's like singular items in my backpack that are worth like four hundred dollars and i didn't buy them for that much listener just so you know i've, I've gotten very lucky uh slash made some good hundred dollar investments a few years ago uh <laughs> sure. and now they're finally paying back but it does kind of terrify me that like my like two thousand dollar worth ish of like backpack yeah. is like i don't actually own any of these things 
Well, and these like things. this, I think this is for for any of the. Uh, Kind of scary. Not game stream. Makes me happy that like, I definitely own my hero clicks. Right. I definitely don't pay for a license to play this game. I, I physically own these bad when, boys. Like to cr give credit to people with like consoles and buy like physical discs. Oh yeah. Um, you can also buy physical discs for some PC games. It's a lot rarer Fringes. now. But yeah, it sounds like. But yeah, to give some credit to them, like they don't ever have to worry about like that getting yoinked out of their store because it's like they're, like Valve's not going to kick down their door and be like. Give us Baldur's Gate three back yeah. now. Like, give us, give it to us. Like, you give know, us back. But yeah. Oh gosh, video games—they're just so much fun. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into not video games, but board games. And by board games, I mean the number one collectible miniatures game of all time. That is, of course, HeroClix. We have Simeon. This is preview season. I, I guess three-ish weeks from pre-release, roughly, is like is going to be preview season now. Maybe yeah. that's what it is going forward. They're doing almost um, a full unboxing. And they, the they kicked here. us off with Aquaman. I want to talk about Aquaman here a little bit. This is the Black Lantern Chase Aquaman, which also, we saw the sculpt before, but man, the giant dead seahorse is so cool looking. Like, oh my gosh, I love it. Aquaman, like all the other Black Lanterns, has a ridiculous point value, which is 40 points for his lowest. And then for only three more points, it costs 60 points. He's 100 points top dial uh, for a plus three to speed, plus one to attack, plus one to damage. So it's very much built to be played at 40 for this Black Lantern and then heal up past his full. Definitely seems to be it. So he has Atlantis, Black Lantern's core, Justice League, Herald, and Monster. He is a JLA member, which is, of course, just Avengers, which is you choose a team ability, they modify their attack value, plus one, which is pretty cool. He has a trait, Watery Grave. This is an insane amount of water terrain. We're going to need more water terrain if you plan on playing this Aquaman. So it's clear squares adjacent to any friendly grave marker are considered water terrain. Free, generate a grave marker into a square of water terrain within four squares. So this dude's going to be flooding the map. The fact that he gets to make a grave marker each turn... And then that also, well, into a square of water. So if he makes it on a corner or, like, if let's say there's just for some reason one square of water. He pumps out eight more squares of water. Okay, very cool. Uh, so, like, this Aquaman is absolutely flooding the map. So, like, once you have water around one grave marker, you can put another grave marker. You get more squares of water. I want to see, I want to play this guy with the rare from Batman so bad just because of the watery grave trait. Like, insane amounts of water. I love this. His special attack power he has, his entire dial, is so he's, he's like zero range, just a charge piece. He goes like charge, he has some flurry mixed in, battle fury the entire time, special attack power the entire time. Trident of the Fallen King, Blades, Claws, Fangs, Steel Energy, and Poison. So sorry, Blades, Claws, Fangs, Steel Energy, Slash, Slash, Poison. When Aquaman uses it, opposing characters occupying water terrain within six squares are considered adjacent to him. So the fact that you can free... Make a water terrain, right? Just generate a grave hindering terrain marker into a square of water terrain within four squares. And then all of that next to it, it gives you, you have a free five square reach, but you always have a, a four, a six square reach, I guess. But you can like auto do it, beginning of the turn. Okay, well, free, make the water, and then boom, poison. Pretty tight. It's pretty freaking cool. You can just poison six squares away if they're in water. I like that a lot. And then his special damage power is, or sorry, his defense power is the Dead Sea, which, haha, very funny. I like, I like that, I like that. Impervious, if Aquaman occupies water terrain, he increases the result of the single D6 roll by plus one. So he's got a 50-50 Impervious. It's not protected penetrating. Like, he can probably get blown through. Like, no, nothing's protected out wit. But this is such a fun, like, dial. Like, I don't think it's anything crazy, Makes but it's really solid. A little bit more worth rolling, especially on his like forty point line. Yeah, it's like you know, then like your that is true that it is just three, single four. d six rolls. Period. Actually, I should say that it's not just with impervious; it's every single d six roll that he does. So his blades, his impervious, they are way better. That's true. Yeah, I do like that a lot. But yeah, Aquaman's just like solid. His breakaway rolls, if he ever needs to like break away, is also a plus one. I think it's it might get crazy with like the Black Lantern chases because. We've seen what Necron does. Like, I guess Black Hand's in there. I don't remember exactly what Black Hand does, but Necron can do free, just like drop a grave marker. Yeah. Aquaman can free, drop a grave marker <laughs> adjacent to a grave marker, essentially. Yeah. Because and that's what twelve squares or something like that. Yeah. Twelve or so squares of water terrain now. So like, yeah, it just 
stacks he, insane, and then we saw Superman, but like mostly Necron like healing these guys past their, um, yeah, like their lower dial, like the and that's them that's be you vampires. can kind of tell. Like the hundred points is like man for this for forty, these three clicks don't seem to be worth twenty points each, you know. But you just if you just say you heal, then like okay, yeah, absolutely, why not? Yeah, I think by the end of like this chase set, the Black Lanterns might have a. Uh, stronger outfit than like the deceased from what we've seen. It seems Man. like these grave markers are gonna really they just sure, they just stack up quick. They sure might. Like, they sure might. Instantly. I do the grave markers are gonna kinda go insane. But part of me wants the deceased to just be like the best out of them. Just because they're just like classic zombies. Right. It's like so cool. But uh you wanna go ahead and talk about Harley speaking of deceased, talking yeah. about old Harley Quinzel so, here. Yeah, speaking of deceased, this is the, uh, as far as flavor text goes, this is the deceased version of Harley Quinn. She has Arkham Asylum, Gotham City, Gotham City Underworld, and Scientist Keywords, the Batman Enemy and Underworld team abilities. So her first trait is Zombie Hunting, which she does at the very beginning of her run in the comics. Just kind of, uh, well, I guess we'll get, we'll get to that with double barrels. Uh, so Zombie Hunting is... If you were the first player, when an opposing character is damaged by a friendly character's attack, after resolutions deal that opposing character one unavoidable damage. If they're not KO'd, heal them one click. Mm. Uh, I think we saw this on another character as well. This like deal them one and then heal them one if they this they're is not a, KO'd. Uh, I don't know if it's a new figure, but I know it's what's it called? Death. Yeah. Both versions of Death had this. Also have this. Yeah. So this specifically works extremely well against the deceased characters when they're on their bottom dials. Because, Ooh. so like from what we saw with Superman, uh, I think it says like when they're on those, that last three clicks that they get healed to, they can't be healed. Right. So you will deal them on one unavoidable one. and then they won't be able to heal. So you won't, That's true. you won't heal them with one click. They'll just take one extra. Also, it's so few if you don't kill them. It just, it will just kill them. Right. Yeah. That is nice. Uh, so I think, yeah, that we'll see a few of these zombie hunting kind of characters. Uh then there's also attached to that a unique modifier. If an opponent's force has more characters than yours, friendly characters modify attack and damage <laughs> plus one. Wow. We don't see damage usually getting board wide modifier. Dang. But also attached to attack. Pretty solid. Um, yeah, and she's got a 65 and a 25 point line. So I think that first trait, you know, maybe you're playing her at 65, maybe 25. I don't really know. But if. At some point in the game, your opponent's force gets more characters than yours, or if it's like, you know, they're bystander generating, yeah. they're, they're dropping constructs, whatever it may be, it, that's kind of huge. It's pretty <laughs> solid, is. giving everyone a plus one attack and damage. Uh, so that's her only trait, I guess. Uh, her double barrels is her special attack power on her 65-point line. She has it for four clicks. And that attack power is knockback, energy explosion. Harley Quinn deals penetrating damage to characters with the monster keyword. That's an old goodbye Mr. J kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert if you haven't read Deceased. But, um, so she has that for four clicks with running shot and super senses. And with those first four clicks, she also has three damage with probability control. So pretty standard attack values, but maybe you're copying... Ooh, maybe the Iconics Bane with a 13 attack top dial. You're copying that with this Harley Quinn. Everyone on the Batman enemy team has 13s, potentially. Uh, okay. Pretty solid. At 25 points, which is where most people will probably find the most utility in her, she has a full dial of three clicks. That is sidestep, quake, uh, combat reflexes, and a special damage power that is empower and support, which is just in addition to her first trait, Insanely good. That is really good for yeah. points. So that first trait, you do have to be the first player um, mm. when the opposing character is damaged, like that whole thing. But the, you, you, you can blah, you yeah. modifier, not so much. The unique modifier <laughs> is after the double slash, so that is just always in effect. Because like you don't have to be first player. I will for that. say if she is twenty five points, then She's not taking up very many points. You may yeah. end up having more people on that's your force. The, that's so you just kind of have to build smart, I guess. The weird conundrum with yeah. it. Is she, are you running like a tent pole and she's like just a 25-point yeah, filler with like a power three or four support? point, like three or four character team? Because even, 25, even cheap. just 25 points in power support side step. I know, power support side step is so good. I really like Quake. Nowadays, like destroying blocking with that is pretty solid. Um, 
Yeah, she act, she's got a ton of Having utility. Underworld on. to be a ten speed oh, carry yeah. or eight speed of sidestep carry is kind of solid too. Yeah, not not for nothing. Yeah, I I actually really like this Harley. Um, I don't remember her using a bat in the comic, the deceased comic, but yeah, it is kind of just a classic looking Harley, and it's very the uh, very Suicide Squad. Yeah, she talks the bat baseball bat. That's kind of the pose she's doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Look I like at, this piece a lot. I think it's cool. Look at all these kids we can corrupt. That's I think when, uh, that's when all yeah. the bad guys bring the busload of kids to the oh, geez. the Gotham City uh, jungle. Is what they call it. I think. I will say. I wish he had toughness instead of super senses, and then blades instead of quake. Because then this would be like the perfect Ash Williams dial for <laughs> okay. like yeah. He's got the double barrel shotgun, zombie hunting, double zombie barrels. hunting. Yeah. yeah, like this would have been really cool. But like this, he's not a super sense guy, not a quake dude. Otherwise, man, almost like the perfect Ash dial. Really cool piece. I really like that Harley Quinn. She's really fun. Do 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 do. Look at that, Simeon. Yeah. Little, little, little goon. Sorry, we're just scrolling through the Facebook feed, and there's the uh, the polar bear, little the big polar bear. number one medal next to next to him. I get to talk about old Toyus Manis. Just kidding. His name is Jack Nimble, which I didn't know. And I assume his middle name is like Brian or B something. So it's Jack B Nimble. Or yeah. I, I can only assume. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I, nev I never knew Toy Man's name was Jack Nimble. So old Jack B Nimble, Jack B Quick here. You know, over candlesticks and whatnot. So he is a Superman enemy. Legion of Doom, Metropolis. Superman Revenge Squad and Scientist Keywords. Love that Superman Revenge times, Squad is Yeah. Not, How many times not has that dying. been? Not much. Yeah, there's, li there's very few people with Superman Revenge Squad. I want to say less than like 20. It's low. He has improved targeting, ignores characters, which is really nice. He's 5 range, 2 targets. No other special speeds, no other special symbols at all. And he's 60 points. That's it. 60 points. Give him, take it or leave it. No lower line, no higher line. He has trait. I demand more toys. Mind control. When Toy Man uses it to target an opposing character with the armor or robot keyword, he may be given a second attack before reverting forces. So those characters get to do two attacks. That could be really good. I like that a lot. And then at the beginning of the game, if you weren't the first player, you may unequip an equipment from an opposing character and equip it to Toy Man. That's really cool. Especially since I you can choose to go man, first. Man, I like second. that a lot. Yeah, if you weren't the first player. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go second and also... I'll pick map and also unequip yeah. so-and-so. Like, can you imagine? Like, so post-rotation, the only lanterns are going to be ones that need rings to do it. Mm. You just instantly like, yeah, no, your Cordian guy. That's like on the easy side. Your core dude, that's my yellow ring now. So butts to you, you know, like that sucks. But Apocalypse, Genesis. No sword. No sword. Yeah. yeah. There's some there's some interesting stuff. He has 60 points, but he's he's cool. He has sidestep, mastermind, top dial, as well as a special damage power for the first two clicks, which is empower and enhancement. When he uses either, friendly characters that started the game on your opponent's force are considered adjacent to him. So when he mind controls them, that's essentially the that's what it's saying. It's yeah, literally so friendly that characters or that started on your opponent's force. If for some reason, they're playing like Mockingbird. Oh, for like sure, the, uh, that's also true. The characters that, uh, what, is it, what is that called? They, the, that uh, trader mechanic. Trader mechanic, yeah. yeah. That's the only other thing if that this would trigger If he's playing popular trader I mechanics, think. like Mockingbird, Ao, <laughs> yeah. um, Sasha Banks, yeah. very popular traders, <laughs> uh, Alex Wilder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think this guy's I actually like him a lot. 60 insane. points seems a little much. I don't know, like size. So he's got a seven square reach with ignoring characters with his mind control. He's got all this mastermind. He's got such a deep dial. I almost wish he was like, you know, the cheap little 30, 40 points and not be seven clicks of, of life. But right. he always has mastermind. And then after he loses his empower enhancement, he gets prob. And then down dial, it's all blue. It's plasticity. It's mastermind. It's shape change. He never gets an attack power. I, I really like the design of this toy man. I think he's really, really cool. People are... Are a little bummed that he doesn't do anything with Starro. Because that's like yeah. I get it, because he's holding the Starro, the old Starro Hero figure. This is, I think, the what the I'm second still... time ever that they've 
directly referenced I believe so. figures? I believe it's like Title Deadpool and then this guy. Yeah. I don't want to say that's it. Title Deadpool was like on a Heroclix map. He was like yeah. giant on a Heroclix map that was his and base. And he's like stomping two other people in the yeah, Deadpool. Yeah, like, which is really Terror cute. and like I think it was Terror and I want to say it was else. attending. Yeah, I feel like, like it's just two random, commons. two random, extremely small, like the size of a normal hero click or oh, yeah, hero click figure right. is like foot, super tiny. I like the fact that they got the, any kind of detail. I'm curious how the star is going to look in real life. Yeah, with, with the bigger now that we know that like the sculpts are bigger now, the new scale and everything. I hope he looks pretty cool. I'm it really is, hoping. It is hilarious that he's just straight up holding like that that convention exclusive star. Oh, it's funny. Um, Let's no, I, I think the, when uh, when two Scott Porters come out, that like maybe playing him on a theme just to get that first trait to pop off might actually be a thing. I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just hoping that he's good. But I think for sixty points, the amount of stuff that he can do, I do like yeah, he does lots. If you have like a dedicated like I'm gonna mastermind to this thing that takes a lot of damage, maybe, maybe he's got a shot. All right, next up. He's got a big old purple cloud. He's rising from it. It's Raish al Ghul. Raz al Ghul. However, however Bane wants to pronounce it. Yeah. Or uh, Liam Neeson, I suppose. He's got League of Assassins, Assassin, Martial Artist, and Ruler keywords. He is 037A in the set, so he's a rare non-prime. And he has the target trait, which is... Uh, th you're going to see this on probably a lot of assassins because it is at the beginning of the game for all friendly characters with this trait give a target token to an opposing character for all characters with this trait when a friendly character with the assassin keyword KOs an opposing character with a target token score 25 victory points mm. which to most people is just called 25 points uh, yeah not to be confused with mission points victory points are just like your actual points when you KO a character, you normally get their total of points for that character KO'd. Uh, if they're given this target token, you score an additional 25 victory points. So that's the first trait. The second is the leader of the league free. If no opposing characters have a target token, give an opposing character a target token. Friendly characters with the target trait treat to that token as if it were generated by this trait. So after you KO the first person, that has a target token, you get 25 points on top of whatever their cost was. And then as a free action, you can just map wide, give a new I like opposing that. character a target token. I like token. that a lot. I do too. And it makes a ton of sense for the, literally the leader of the League of Assassins it makes sense. to be able to choose new targets. But yeah, I could see, I could see this being game changing in certain maps or certain games. Like, I pick, you know, if I'm only going to KO two or three things and I am wise with, like, my first couple target cho yeah. choices, I might get an additional 75 points. Yeah. And that could be enough to sway it in my favor. Like, I think that's fairly huge. Um, we'll get into his dial next because uh, he is 80 points and only six clicks long, so that's probably his weakest point. But uh, top dial, he has two clicks of running shot with blades and a special defense power that is Mastermind, Super Senses, and Toughness. He also has a special damage power for his first three clicks that is Leadership, Outwit, and when Ra's al Ghul uses Leadership and succeeds, you may generate a 007 League Assassin on click number three. So you've got a way to get like some more Assassins out, obviously for like Mastermind fodder and stuff like that. That's something that we've come to kind of expect from these quote-unquote leader types. <laughs> right. He also has the Underworld team ability. On click three, he goes from that running shot blades combo, which, man, I, the only thing I will say is I wish, if you gave him running shot top dial, I wish he had improved targeting out of adjacency. So I could, like, running shot adjacent yeah. and then maybe blades next turn or something. That would um, be really nice. Because he really kind of does just, not exactly moves on to, like, a close combat based thing but kind of as close combat yeah. the rest of the dial. yeah I so, guess so click 3 through 5 he gets sidestep precision strike toughness on clicks 4 and 5 instead of that special leadership outwit power he gets just regular outwit and then his last click he gets stealth blades battle fury and regeneration yeah so, like nowhere else on his dials yeah no. and just boom last click is this is like Lazarus Pit, right? Like, yeah. I guess he has blades top dial, but still, it's just like, oh, okay. 
Yeah, he's That's absolutely heel. Heel up. If it, like top dial, fairly solid. And I'll, I'll even say like if Assassin gets enough of a push, if this target thing gets like more people like this where they can do stuff like that, getting additional victory points for um, let's see for all friendly characters that's trade target token to an opposing character. It doesn't say standard character, so like you could oh jeez pick like a. There's not a lot of characters that can do this, but you could pick like a bystander. So let's say I'm playing it. like that super Spider-Man with the trash can, or I'm okay. playing Groot, who gives them a Leslie Evans, and then it's like beginning of the game, and like Leslie Evans is the target. I get 25 points when I KO Kill Leslie, Leslie Evans. Evans. Oh dang, yeah. I Ugh. can see this being actually fairly solid at 80 points, and then okay. obviously you're just trying to mastermind Super Sense that top dial. You do not want to go lower. You're definitely getting blasted as soon as like you get off those clicks you're, oh, you're yeah. just getting KO'd with this race but um, a really cool way to do it I think it. just for the amount I think he had to be kind of lackluster dial wise because the amount of extra points he can just give you yeah is just so dangerous. much yeah. it, it, it is actually a dangerous amount yeah, if they gave you him mercy like, rule somebody pretty easily with being able to be like alright 25 okay with that trait and that <laughs> special like this skill you gain an extra like, 50 yeah. points first turn you kill something like okay we killed the target uh, here's the next target since this is just free and now no one has it uh, kill that guy boom we got an extra 50 points this turn next turn can potentially just keep getting another 25 points or whatever yeah yeah I, you know, I don't know I think there's it's cool. I won't say ways to break him in Silver Age, but I do think in Silver Age he has a ton of options to make easy target token like characters. Yeah. And then all you need after that point is somebody that can get across the map and like do some sniping kind of stuff. But very true. Fun you version know, of uh, Raish. I think he's I more like leader based than oh, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, I was gonna say something about like having running shot blades. It's it is weird, but then I I remember what somebody once said to me when I was talking about the old um, Superman Red. He has charge pulse wave. There's a lot of figures with like charge pulse yeah. wave. Yeah, and it's like okay, now look, I get it. He he has charge. He can at least then pulse wave next turn. Um, it's like brace. You can't really do that, like what you said. But it's like, hey, you know what? Look at it this way. Would you rather have him have like nothing? Yeah. At least he's got, I guess, something. I would definitely have preferred the blades and precision strike be switched, of course. But uh, at least it's at least it's not not nothing, you know. At least if they base him, then it's like, okay, well then I'm gonna yeah. blades you. I'm a twelve attack with blades and three damage. I don't, you know, I'll get more damage for getting you. Mastermind now. fodder for days. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we get the Rayshagul Prime version. He's a little more greener, not just around the ring, but also his little smoky effect is green. I think his coat was already pretty green looking before. Yeah. yeah, it was. Okay, his sculpt is very, very similar. The only difference, like, the flame is a little greener here, which I want to assume this is, like, full on Lazarus, Lazarus Pit, Pit yeah. version. I think that's. You know, Lazarus Pit's pretty green. Oh, yeah, he has a trait. Okay. So this one is half the points, maybe way better. He doesn't allow you to get as many points, that's for sure. But he's just straight up 40 points, which is kind of wild. League of Assassins, Assassin, Brute, Martial Artist, Ruler. He has a trait called the Demon. Sideline active. Other friendly characters. The Assassin keyword, modify attack, plus one. Oh. Dang. That's really good. Just yeah. straight up, just period. Just straight up. Okay. I get that he's still your prime, and he takes up a prime slot on the sideline. But which, dang. yeah, you don't necessarily wow. want... Okay. Well, not usually you don't want your prime to be, like, a sideline-only kind of piece. Well, but no. And then here's an interesting thing that how he works the other Ra Rachel Ghoul here is when another friendly character named Raza Ghoul, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Raz. I'm used to saying Raz. I'm sorry, everybody, I'm sorry. Uh, named Raza Ghoul is KO'd, you may generate Raza Ghoul from your sideline on click five in a square that, that character lost occupied. If you do until your next turn, he has immune. So on click five, he's a pretty simple just blades, super senses, battle fury with his special speed power, which is charge flurry sidestep. So it's pretty solid, actually. Um, but he has immune, so that means next turn he'll definitely get to do something. His trait is called the Lazarus Pit. It gives him regen as free, but only if he occupies water terrain or a square on the edge of the map. Well, map being smaller now, pretty pretty easy. Maybe that's what you want to do. The first turn you bring this Roz in is like, okay, well, I don't want to just have him die again. I can either charge flurry sidestep toward a person, get some kills in, 10 attack blades, battle fury. That's pretty dang good. Or I can like sidestep move 10 squares, get to the edge of the map, free regen average is like a three right i can heal back up to click two or something that'd be pretty nice give myself some toughness heal up a little bit you know so it's kind of your choice to like heal him back up or get him into the thick of it 
Maybe he's already in water. Maybe you're playing him with that Aquaman. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you would. Maybe on a ruler theme. I don't think Aquaman would be a ruler. But this is really cool. Even just like, I don't know, if you're not even doing the sideline active, then this is like a 40-point piece with 12 attack, charge blades. Oh, this is a, a great pull and seal. Yeah. This I mean, is, for, this I is mean like, most primes are. But it doesn't take up a bunch of your points. Charge is, flurry, 12 top. Sometimes you want like your shaking. best piece to be a bunch of points, but it's not bad that this guy doesn't take a bunch of points because he's still six cloaks of life for 40 points. That's great economy there. He's got toughness. He's charge flurry sidestep, so he's got a seven square reach with a 12 attack, three damage, battle fury, or just blades. Like This is really, really solid seal pull, and I, I think a great battle royale pull. I don't think you kill this guy in a BR, honestly. If you can, if you can play him smart, I don't know. I don't remember if there's a main set Aquaman or not, but you yeah. somehow there's some people with water somewhere. I mean, there's a, uh, there's also Pretty just a <laughs> straight up like water terrain you can place also on that. The map, so. Yeah. So ooh yeah. Depending on where you put terrain. that, if you are playing the other race or if you're just playing him all on his own, just to, like every turn have regeneration. I, lo I love the idea of how well these two primes work together. A lot of the time, yeah. it's, well, not two primes. So the A and B of a figure working together. Usually the A and B of a figure. Like, don't work together at all. Like, no. that's just usually how it is. All the Avengers ones, none of them work together. But this one was like, if you specifically play that one, that I get to come back to life, and it's me. And also, let's say you're playing that one on a League of Assassins theme team. They, they usually all have Assassin or just an Assassin theme team. They all get plus one attack. Yeah. That's so solid. I like that sideline active effect. I think even if he didn't have the, like, I get to ways. come back to life when, or I get to come into play when your normal Rage dies. Then it's kind of cool, but even without yeah. that, I would be like, "Dang! Like this is just better version of the captain yeah. sidekick mechanic with the ally mechanic." Right. This is just the ally mechanic, but just map wide. Yeah, if you play an the assassin ally, team, ally mechanic, like, but it doesn't rely on what your opponent's yeah. playing. Yeah, like this is really, really solid. So I don't know I like this. I like this design a lot. I don't think it's the world's. It's not the most nuts prime, but it's a really cool well, way to do a design for a prime. It's really yeah. fun. It says other friendly characters, so he doesn't give himself the plus one. But these sideline active traits are also just active when he's on the board. So sideline active just means that it's also active on the sideline, but because it's a trait, it's right. also it's active. Also, it's just, it's, just, it's yeah. going to be happening. So that plus one won't go away when he like becomes the, the true race or whatever, uh, when he comes in for the non-prime. Absolutely. That's it. That's, those are our notorious spoilers for this past week. I like it. Man, I'm pumped for Notorious. I, I just can't wait. I want it to be here. I want it to come out already. I want to play it. I want to see what the rest of them do. I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot. A second DC set in a year, even if it is on a fluke. And this is just like looking to be such a strong set. I don't know. This year has been so good so far. And then just Notorious is going to keep it rolling. I don't know. Simi, what do you think about these, these previews? I'm excited. I, yeah. <clears throat> you know, we've been doing, doing these uh, theme and pulp articles for a couple weeks now Very and true. one of the things I just like kept thinking like every time I was typing in like you know figures looking at different stuff how much better pulp is going to get when this set drops yeah and like yeah. I don't think anything in this set particularly breaks pulp but there's definitely going to be some inclusions <clears throat> that will come from this set not just like the goons although the goons do make huge headway into pulp I think, uh, but like normal race on his own for eighty points, he is a rare. That straight yeah. up lets you KO like get extra points. So that's pretty huge. Like Solid. that mechanic alone is pretty big. Um, I don't know if the Batman team up uh, Deathstroke has assassin, but I'm assuming he does. He has like Ooh, twelve he's keywords. Got to. So yeah, there's there's just a lot of stuff in this set that I'm looking forward to building for in pulp. And then as far as theme goes, there's like. There's a lot of new mechanics that are coming out that are keyword specific that are really interesting. A lot of stuff that makes certain characters pop a little bit better. Uh, Harold's getting a bit of a boost. I like that. I like my orange lantern Lex and yellow lantern uh, Cordy and Thunder. Yeah. That kind of stuff. The yellow lantern Black Adam, too. The Black yeah. Adam's yellow lantern is just so wild. Which, is, yeah, it is kind of wild. Uh, I think it's like probably. Well, I, I know like the set list is out, so I, I'm pretty sure it would have been seen by now, but there is a chance at some point in the future we get the Yellow Lantern Dark Side, which mm. would be pretty cool, because okay. he also comes okay. from the DC st storyline. That's like the Dead Gods spinoff kind of oh, yeah. part of the storyline, not like the OG, but that is like the 
penultimate, like the ending of deceased universe, like is that storyline. And there's a lot of cool stuff that happens in there. Like there's so much stuff they can revisit with deceased. And I'm glad when they first showed like the chases, I was like, ugh. Like I was happy. They're cool chases. I like those characters. Yeah. But then we saw the Harley. Uh, I think last week we saw the Ivy. Um, those are just like also in the DC's universe, and it makes a ton of sense. And I'm yeah. glad that like we're getting some of like the quote unquote heroes that like right like the survivors of it and everything. Right. Yeah. Because like yeah like Superman like fighting against like uh, the zombies like all right like sure like he kind of went no morals because they were zombies and then but like. There's a huge thing with like Kevin Jonathan sense. Kent and with Damian Wayne and there's a bunch of stuff oh, with like sons. Swamp Thing and um, yeah, like even like the the Justice League like pets like what's really Ace the Bat Hound and Crypto uh, and Crypto and, and uh, Detective Chimp. There's like a bunch of stuff huh. that happens with them in the deceased. Not like a bunch, but they have like their own storyline. Yeah, like they save like a little girl and stuff, and it's like really cool. It's really touching. It's really cool. fun storyline. I hope that. DC gets some more flavor down the line. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd be down. I mean, I'm, I'm down for it. I love the alternate zombie stuff. I wished that was one thing that I was bummed out about. Like the normal Marvel zombies is we never got a single hero, like yeah. a single like uh, whatever you would call it, like a survivor from the Marvel zombies. Right. Storyline. We never got a Magneto that was like this is survivor Magneto. Right. Even though like the zombie version, the it kind of has flavor to that, but he's the zombie version. You know, he's not actually like the hero version of Magneto. We never got a. Uh, like, Kitty Pride has such a fun side. I don't know if you ever read that. Yeah. But it's, like, so cool. She's, like, raising a kid. Her and Peter's kid is, like, yeah. who she's raising. And, like, that kid, like, makes a deal with Mephisto. Does all sorts of weird stuff. But basically, <laughs> she's, like, phasing through stuff to run away from the zombies. So, like, oh, it makes sense. She can phase. Like, people, the zombies can't bite her. She, like, sets up a minefield in front of her house. Like, a Kitty Pride that's, like, anarchy and just sets up mines would have been so tight. Like, Man. So it's cool that we're getting, like, a Harley Quinn who's, like, the zombie hunting, like, the hero of the story-esque, right? Like, so I like that we're getting stuff like that. We didn't get that with Marvel. And Marvel had, like a decent amount of, like, hero characters in the Marvel zombie storyline. So I'm cool. By hero, I mean, like, not zombies. The people that are right. fighting the zombies. So, like, the, the yeah, survivors. survivors. The, yeah. Which, I don't know. I would be cool if survivor ever became a keyword. Something, yeah. Something like that. Uninfected. Un uninfected, <laughs> yeah. We got, I like, the Z-Virus keyword. Small tangent, but I, I've been reading uh, Sins of Sinister and, like, not really catching up on X stuff, but I'm just kind of tangentially reading some of it. Yeah. Kitty Pride taking on Orcus soldiers, some pretty brutal stuff. She doing some. She okay. doing some like, what if I just like phase your hand with this gun into like your head and Whoa. like unphase it, and then the guy's just like, what? Like he can't like even. He's like brain dead or whatever. Yeah, he just like Ugh. all he can do is make noise because like now there is like a physical object where yeah there wasn't one before. Yep. She does some pretty brutal stuff, like, which she's done it before. But this is Kate Pride here. Yeah, no the, kitty, no kitty here. Yeah, this is Kate. Kitty's gone. Period. Uh, no, Quiet Council. Uh, Kate uh, goes pretty hard in the comics, which she's done some insane stuff before. There was like the time there was a bullet that was like the size of the moon that was shot at the Earth, and she like phased it through the Earth and got stuck in it. Magneto had to like focus and pull it back to Earth to save her. Oh my gosh, that was like oh interesting. But that wasn't. Like ultra violence. This is right. Like, this is this is messed up. Yeah. There was another. Um, gosh, there was one where she was in like. She was either mind controlled or in like a. Stuck in like some sort of alternate dimension. Okay. And she was like absolutely sure that her and Peter had kids. Mm. And she's like, "Where are kids?" Like she got like real mad. And at one point, she's like holding a bat between it, like in his head. And Whoa. she's like, I'll like unphase this if you don't Jeez. like give me my kids back or something. Okay. Like, it's like brute. It's like she doesn't do it, but Terrifying. it's like insane. Like it's like, oh yeah, that is something that her power allows. Yep, that's, which I is guess horrifyingly so. scary. Uh, and then uh, the domestic. Hey, it's like Colossus. You need to call someone about the domestic <laughs> violence going on in your home. Like that's not cool. He's like, I could, yeah, I can turn my entire body into metal, but she keeps threatening. But my, to, like, but my wife can just. Yeah. Stick a baseball bat in my skull and kill me. Gosh. And then uh, on the DC side, there's been interesting stuff. I can't remember yeah. what uh, what I was reading recently from there. But, man, no, that's just a super side tangent. But as far as, like, the the zombie zombie universe Kate Bride, like, yeah, going, yeah, yeah. like, ham. Oh, dude, she's awesome in that. 
she's so funny. Yeah. Like, I mean, not funny, but like, she's like just does a lot of cool stuff. And like, same thing. Her like son, I forget his name. I think his name is actually just Peter. Um, mm. But he wears a Wolverine costume. He like stabs zombies with his little Wolverine claws. It's really cute. <laughs> it's really cute. It's really funny. All right. We also got some pretty cool stuff for WizKids news. The Scott Porter, the Scott Babom figure, Powerbomb Scott, is finally coming out. So they say, we're ready to drop a pa- some more power bombs here. The next wave of exclusive Scott Porter figures will start rolling out next week. So it is Sunday as we're recording this, so this may have already happened. Just so you guys know. Yeah, they said next week. Next week, this was, this was on... August 31st, so a few days ago. Yeah, Friday. It's Thursday? F- like that. Thursday, yeah. Yeah. As a bonus, we're releasing an additional limited quantity of Scott Porter Hero Clicks for Huntington's figures at the same time. Keep an eye out for the second chance to collect this piece and support a great cause. So if you remember Scott Porter won, I think they did a thousand, then they did an extra two hundred, I want to say, and now they're doing out doing some more, which is awesome. We know that players are going to be excited to add Scott Porter to their Hero Clicks team due to it being an exclusive Hero Clicks game element. The Scott Porter promo won't be legal until one week after the end of the first month it is available. So it's available in September 2023, meaning that it will be legal for play in official events beginning on October 7th, 2023. So that just basically translates to not worlds. Not worlds. Yeah. yeah. Which I I don't have a huge dog in the fight because I'm not going to be playing in Worlds, but I kind of would have liked to see what teams with Scott would have looked like. I know. So that would have been like the last I know big some people we were like, ah, oh, man, I don't want him to come out because then some people will get him, some people won't. And I'm like, honestly, I want to see some people get him. Yeah. If those some people aren't like the normal top tier competitive sure. players, if I'm being honest. Like, I would have liked to see what happens when like only a handful of people have access to a figure. Is that fair? No, of course it's not fair. I want, Is it funny? I want Worlds to be yes. ran like that one WKO I went to where oh, Exospecs was on the line. Gosh. And he gave, like, the, the judge he gave, gave everyone the Exospecs and said, and you can add this to your build for free. And I just, Yo, it was free I was too? just like, that's, that really hurts my team. Ah, this is gonna suck. I didn't pull well, that and was then it did. It really Super hurt my Battle team. World, right? Was it uh, sealed? It was because I, I was say, playing. That was Earth X, man. I was playing. Being uh, able to just be like, yeah, Vulture's got Flurry now. Oh, how nasty! I mean, that takes away his charge sidestep, though, because I think. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You can't use standard powers. Okay. So that okay. that wouldn't be terrible with Vulture, but like, what I will say is like the, the Super Thanos with those Exo Specs. <sighs> Was impossible for Ultimate Thor that with Exo Specs to oh take down. No. <laughs> I Ultimate was like, Thor, no. I just, Ultimate Thor was my best pull. I was like, I just want to do something. And he was like, I'm going to phase up, shoot you next turn, phase back. Yep, you and died. I was just like, oh, oh no. Except to, like, I think that Thanos had phasing and that was it. So he's like, I'm going to take Hypersonic, go up, pop you. Come I want to say that is what he had. That Thanos had like the ability where if he Oof. was like carried or something, he could make an attack. He had some weird stuff. Yeah, he did. Uh, but. Yeah, there's also some... What was their other post about that Scott Porter with, like, the code? Because I know at the top of the show we mentioned that, and I do want to say that code out loud at some point just so that if if you are looking for the Scott Porter... There's also, like, some information they dropped about it being a limit of two. Yeah, so that might be in the email or something that you might have gotten for the store. I I want to say, I don't think it was on that... Pose. Did they have like a- the next wave of Scott Porter's? So, as thank you to supporting the Hero Hooks for Huntington's purchase, Scott's. So, the Hero Hooks for Huntington's figure, this is a single use discount code for $5 off. Oh, yeah. So, there's this one. Five that's the Scott. five for Scott. Um, it's the to help five, cover part of your shipping fees four, when you order the Scott Porter Scott. that's wearing the white WizKid shirt. Now, here are the important notes here. To use the discount code, you must be logged into the blah, blah, blah. Um, Shot Wiskin's account that you use to place your previous order for the Hero Clicks for Huntington's figure. It will not work if you order through a different account through the quest. So you have to be, you've had to have already used it, you have to have already bought a Hero Clicks for Huntington's figure and then are now going to buy this white shirt, Scott, and then it'll be $5 off. That's how the code works, right? The discount code does not grant special purchase, access, or guarantee availability for the Scott Porter figures. An order cap of two of each Scott figure per person, including those previously ordered, will be enforced. And I don't know what that means. I, so I think um, that means that retroactively, well, let me let me see it again. Uh, two of each Scott Porter figure per person, including those previously ordered. So I think that retroactively they are going to, if you purchased more than two on an account, they're going to refund that to you. I hope and so. I definitely hope there's a refund. Well, um, yeah. I yeah. don't think they could do that without. I don't, yeah. I think it'd be wild. Um, 
so I am glad that we we got like four locked in between like all of us. Yeah, very true. Because we're giving away we're giving away three, three. So yeah, yep. um, but yeah, then this next one is going to be a limit of two. I think that'll mean that'll mean more people have access to access it, which is great. It. Yeah, a few people were like, "Well, we had one person order enough for everyone in the group because like we weren't available or they saw it first or whatever," and like I understand completely how that would be frustrating. Yeah, at the same time, like there's no amazing way to do this. There's no way they can guarantee. Just like with the Wonder Woman 80th like codes, there's no way they could guarantee that like one person wasn't redeeming more than one. Right, very true, um, very true. So there's there's no way that they can absolutely guarantee that only one person is only buying two Scott Porters. There's also no way that they can really limit it truly without you know some people getting hurt and some people not getting like a huge advantage kind of thing. So I'm glad that they're doing what they can, which is yeah. putting a cap of two. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm not in marketing. I'm not in sales. I don't know how the best way to do that uh, would be. Yeah, I have zero clue. But, yeah, if out of 1,000, they limit it to two, that means at least 500 people get it. They didn't say That's there nice. was only going to be 1,000. There might be more for this one, but assuming, like, right. based off the last run, it'll be somewhere in that. And uh, also with how many international people tried to get it last time and just for whatever reason when it dropped, like, you know, they were asleep maybe. <sighs> right. Ugh, you know, that was tough. I assume, like, in the U.K. when it dropped it, because I think it dropped around, like, 11 or 12, which I think would be, gosh, close to, like, midnight there, or, like, maybe eight hours. I don't know. Mm. It wouldn't wouldn't have been a good time there. (laughs) It's all I can say, but, yeah. that It is what it is. Um, It goes, well, the the Huntington's ones go to a good cause, and the Powerbomb ones are cool. All I want is one of each. That's all I'm, like, hoping for, and then... We've got some promises we have to fulfill, so that's where we're going. Very true. Yeah, ones, we so. got to get. We have to get those done. So yeah, I think I got the cap when I first got them because I was like, okay, I need yeah. to get, I need to get the three for those guys. I want one for myself. I want to get one for you, one for Ian. So I bought the six when I first could get them. Now it's because you know it was going to go to six different people. So now it's like, oh man, yeah. I guess I'm only getting two. Uh, <laughs> get, interesting. Getting two. A little awkward. I put in one for four because I didn't know if you guys had seen it. In oh time. sure, yeah. And so we've got two from me, two from you. So we'll have three. We'll have for, enough to give to the people that need yeah, to get them, and then like, at the very least, yeah. And then we'll have one shared one that we'll put like one a little, shared one. The little Scott Shrine. We'll add it to the Scott Shrine. Yeah. I don't know why I'm looking like there's actually a Scott Shrine. We don't have a single we don't have a single Scott Porter thing up there besides like the signed figures. Yeah. Uh, and the one signature that he did do. So you, you there's mean a our, mini I guess there's a mini Scott Shrine. You're just gonna discount um, our Racer X and uh, all of his voice acting accolades we have listed on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, we got Racer X up there somewhere that I'm not it's on the green that screen. I'm not aware of. Uh, you know what, speaking of like some stuff Scott Porter signed, I finally today played Absorbing Man Prime. Oh yeah. AKA EXA. Yeah, EXAs. I don't know why you call them anything else. Uh, I was able to like easily get him to pop off by mid game each game. Yeah. Like get him into it, and that's not even be like having any crazy mobility characters. That's just like wow. Like, the fact that you get to just move them all two squares right away for each turn is like oh, it's really good. On a small map, I feel um, like yeah, that, yeah, a small map makes it like so easy. It's also, super easy. Honestly, them just existing so your opponent messes with placement. Is really nice. They were like, "Well, I know what this guy's doing this game," and I'm like, "That's fine by me." If that's yeah. only this if you're gonna focus does, on the sideline, yeah, the that's sideline cool. mechanic, that's totally cool. He's dude. not even that great when he comes in. He does. Like, you know, yeah. he's not that great when he comes. That's what I found. He's really not that great when he comes in. Something that is really funny is you get to choose a power that he gets as soon as he's targeted with an attack. Um, so you just like someone targeted him, like my control. He's just right. got battle fury. So, anyways, <laughs> awkward. Oh, man, um, that's rough. But it's also like, it helps him defensively. He just has toughness. You're like, okay, invincible. Yeah. Yep. No, no, no he's got invincible. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to shoot me with a guy with Psychic Blast. And you I think can't, I'll like, take, like uh, you, you could outwit him beforehand. You're like, what are you going to choose? I'm like, oh, I don't know. What will I choose? Um, how many outwits you got? Yeah, how many outwits you got, bro? So he's like, wow, so fun. And it's, it's really cool that I own a Scott Porter side one. So thank you so much. Shout out Scott Porter. Like, that was super cool. I super enjoyed that. Really quick, I want to shout out before we move on any more as else in the episode here is the Dial H for Hero Clicks event that we are doing. This is going to be September 14th. This will be in the 
Graceland Convention Center, the place where if you're familiar with going to Worlds, going to Graceland, you know that it is where the fan appreciation event happens. This is going to be that Wednesday night, the day before Thursday, which is the first full day of Worlds. So it's the first day like with Worlds events fully happening, right? So that Wednesday, we're going to be doing a super fun kickoff event. Simeon, Ian, and I will all be there. You, If you show up, you'll be getting something just free, just because you'll be getting a fun little figure for free if you show up to the event. We're going to be doing some fun here who's guessing games like Bad Samaritan while the Bad Sam World Championship. We're going to be doing some Jeopardy and maybe some more games going on. We, we thought of quite a few fun things for this event. So I just wanted to reiterate that as we get closer and closer to Worlds that if you weren't originally planning on being there Wednesday night or maybe you're going to make plans Wednesday night, maybe decide to come to the Dial H Welcome event. It's really cool that WizKids is giving us the opportunity to do like this official like welcome event it's really awesome they're giving this opportunity to us as just like content creators and be like hey we love the game you guys love the game let's get excited for worlds have a fun little event it's there's no cutthroat competition it's just some hey hanging out maybe some guessing games a little bit of jeopardy and just having a blast so just wanted to shout that out really quick guys before we moved on with the rest of the show here yeah they did say they opened the room block up a little too they Uh, did yeah so So they allowed the um Retroactively change it to Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna stay Wednesday night, you'll get that same deal, which is really cool. Also, because we talked about it last week, and I don't know how much you listeners enjoyed it, but I me to me really enjoyed going through checking out the legacy cards. We thought it was a really fun thread to go over. But I've decided we might as well mention the August winner. So the winners of the very last round was a three-way tie between Two Gun Kid, Dragonfly, 2009, and then Slade Wilson. So a triple tie, kind of crazy. And then congratulations to the overall, the person, sorry, the person that had the best theme. That was Dragonfly 2099 with his indie click. So he did all like the Judge Dread clicks and stuff. So he won for best theme, which we kind of thought he was going to. So yeah. shout out him. And then also, he ended up winning the overall month with 14 total votes. So shout out Dragonfly2099 for winning. I will say, I feel a little bad. I don't think we talked about any of your legacy card designs. (laughs) But uh, hey, you still won the month. uh, So month well won. And then... This might honestly be something I, I don't know, it's so fun to like see the creativity of the Hero Hooks community because they're already starting off September. And September needs to be, um, I believe it's a character that has a stop click so far. A character with a stop click and then something else. So it's really, really fun to see what people are doing with making a legacy card. So the legacy card contest might be something we follow. Shout out to Oathful on Realms for just running it. It's really cool. Okay, it's called the end of something. So the character either needs stop clicks or the character marks the end of something. And it says, feel free to explain this with your post. So, so far, we got some Swamp Thing. We got, I want to say, 2099. We got Doomsday. Those are the three that have currently come out. We might do an end of September talk about this, not once it's all wrapped, but it's pretty cool. I really like the legacy cards, and I just wanted to shout out, finish off the thread we did last week by saying who the winner was. So again, congratulations to Dragonfly2099 for winning both the best theme and the best, I can't say dials, the dials already existed, but the best abilities, the best legacy cards that you designed for yeah. those characters. If he comes to our welcome event on Wednesday night, he'll get a prize. Okay. It'll be the same participation prize as oh, okay. else. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, yep. But, uh, Fair enough. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into some questions for the show. There are dozens of us. Dozens! These questions are all on our Discord, the ones we got this week anyway. If you aren't a part of our Discord, I would say strongly think about it. For $5 a month, you get access to the Discord. That is hanging out. Simi and I will pop in a general chat, chat a little bit every once in a while. We'll play games like Bad Samaritan, the Hero Host Guessing Game, which is a ton of fun. There's a lot of people that go back and forth about team building, about stuff that's just happening in hero clicks, all sorts of fun stuff. You also get access to a lot of Dial H videos a day or two early, sometimes a week or even more early, or sometimes videos that just will never come out for the public. You can see by being a member of our Patreon and all of that is through the Discord. It's super simple. You don't have to navigate the weird patron layout and figure out that website. Most people have a Discord. It's super easy and it's all on there. We also do some monthly giveaways. It's a ton of fun. So that's where these questions are coming from you can also ask them dial at gmail.com if you want to send us some gmail questions uh, i went ahead i i like deleted twitter i don't care anymore yeah. it's just like you know what yeah, i decided 
I decided, <laughs> hey, I deleted X. Yeah. You know, I was looking for an excuse to do it anyways, because, like, there is no Heroclix community on Twitter. There are, like, there's, say, like, two or three people that use Twitter in the Heroclix yeah, community. Yeah, where, so wherever low. you fall on it, like, I will just say, like, personally... The communities that I was on Twitter for have suffered so much in the last couple months that they are worthless now. Honestly, I always hate the Twitter. fact that people you, posted the worst, yeah. grossest stuff that I would see on Twitter, and I just I was done with well, it. Well, the fact that like you were able to buy yourself like the blue oh that's so cringy and then get pushed, that's so so lame. It may it meant like you can just pay most for it? of the stuff that was coming on my feed and most of the stuff that was. Like, even on the people I follow, like, I would have yeah. to search out people. Like, I have 12 people that I follow on, like, one of my Twitter accounts or yeah. X accounts, whatever. Uh, and on that account, I would have to scroll for, like, days to, like, find Ugh, their newest post. That's like, miserable. I, I would just that. go to, like, the people I follow, click on them individually. And at a certain point, I was like, this is just, like, too much work to it see is. an update. Like, yeah. Joan and Vasquez says, like, made a sandwich today. And I was like, Sweet. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's the creator of Invader Sim. Oh, for, is it? For oh. anyone that, yeah. Okay. Joan, Jonan, Vas- Jonan, 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 Jonan well, whatever your name is. Yeah. Glad, glad to get a sandwich. Uh, yeah, that was li- like his tweet yeah. was literally like made a sandwich today. Hope you all enjoy. Honestly, comic something. book Twitter was that's that was actually the last straw in the back. Comic book Twitter is miserable. I, yeah. I can't say comic book Twitter. Um, I don't care that's about so Spider Man White Lotus. Don't make me care about Spider Man White Lotus. Please oh. stop talking about it. I don't care. Um, I'm not going to watch it. I don't care what the actor's opinions were. I'm not going to watch your Spider-Man fan film. Um, <laughs> I did. It's bad. But, okay, so you got me. Never yeah. mind. You got me. B- bad press is good press. All press is good press. But anyways, um, but I was like, okay, I'm done with Twitter. If you want to, the page is still there. If you want to message Dial H for if you think I'll open up Twitter in like a year or two, maybe I will. Or X, geez, whatever. But it's just like, I don't care anymore. It's such a bad. It's To be fair, I always thought Twitter was a bad platform. I never liked it. Um, it just seems so much harder to communicate on it. Yeah, it really is. Um, the way that, like the and there's, the there's way just, reply chains work on there. No I hate Heroclix it. community on it. I think yeah, it, that's they the made bigger a Twitter thing. for it. Like the original guys made a Twitter for it like ten years ago, back in 2013, because it was like, sure, have a Twitter, have a Facebook, have all the socials, have an Instagram. There's no Heroclix community on Twitter. No. There's really not one on Instagram. There's way more on Instagram than there is on Twitter. So we're gonna keep the Instagram around. But anyways, right. this is a long rant to say. You don't. You can't message the Twitter. If you have questions for us, message us on Facebook or shoot us an email at dialageforhero who's at gmail.com because we aren't... Yeah, if you send us a message on Twitter, which no one has done even in months anyways, don't. Just don't because we're not there. I'm not going to see it. It's still there. It's still up, but uh, I'm not going to see it. Anyways, or the leave questions... Leave a review. Or leave a review. A, question. Yeah, hey, a five-star review you know with a what? question? That we'll answer huge. that question. Yeah, please. If you write a five-star review with like 80 questions, we'll answer them. Well, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say that. I'll get myself in some hot water, but leave a review. Hey, and then also shout outs to the person that left a review last time. We uh, we did send them a care package. We sent them like a team. I want to say I sent them like a team up card, maybe a legacy card. I can't forget, but it was like just a quick little thing. So we'll do the same thing. Yeah, the first person to leave a review this week that's never left a review for Dial H on either iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean, go ahead, leave a review, email us as soon as you leave the review, and we'll go ahead. We'll send you a. Uh, a little fun little gift package. A real, real simple thing that we can just send in an envelope. So something cool like that. So just, yeah, feel free to do that. Anyways, moving in finally to questions. Like 10 minutes of rabble before we actually got into questions here. Izone Bill asks, who most needs to read this book? Your answer doesn't have to be here if it's related. It can, it, it, but it can be if you want to get spicy. The book is Podcasting for Dummies. But Bill had posted, like I want to say, like two or three different four dummies books he's a real for dummies guy i um i was in half price books the other day yeah in there hey so was i actually yeah. i finally decided to go in there i was like what is this half price books yeah is the, going uh, on about the like computer game slash like video game whatever little like little it's nook tiny nook yeah, yeah it's, it's like really, really compared small. to the rest of the store which to be fair it's a bookstore so that's true glad that they Why have it at all but uh books in this bookstore yeah <laughs> what is there more video games in this bookstore yeah. i go in there and i check for uh in 64 games all the time oh sure like, I'm a bargain hunter for N64 stuff. That's fair. That's fair. Um, usually leave disappointed. Not really disappointed. Yeah. I don't have high hopes. But yeah. while I was in that little nook, there's like a whole section of different, like a lot of it's like C++, how to like use Excel spreadsheet, how to use PowerPoint. Like there was several books that were like outdated by like generations of uh, like one was like right. for how do you, yeah Adobe Yikes. like Photoshop Pro like it was oh, like a, it was like Photoshop yeah. Pro but I you looked at the date and it was like you can't download this anymore. I was like know? there are so many updates. Pat like print doesn't work for computers, and which is 
why like most computer games, there's like all these Fortnite guides and stuff in this section. Oh, no. And I'm like, print does not work for this because by the time it's typed up, yeah, it published, yeah. distributed, it's already on to the old, new thing. It's old news, man. It's like technology just moves too fast. But there were a lot of uh, blah, blah, blah for dummies, for dummies in that section. And yeah. like one of them was like Photoshop for dummies. It was like sure. almost applicable to us. Sure. But yeah, podcasting for dummies. Uh, who needs this? I would say, I don't think this is a spicy take at all. Um, I would say 95% of Heroclix content creators, and like sometimes we fall in this category. Absolutely. So I'm not gonna like pretend like you know we're infallible or anything, but the amount of times I'm listening to a Heroclix podcast and all of a sudden I hit like 30 seconds of silence and I have to like pull my phone up to see if it accidentally paused yeah, or if I'm getting a call still going? or something. Like, What's happening? Yeah, What's like, I got my headphones in, so. What's happening? Because like my phone's not in my hand. That's not how you listen to podcasts, right? And I just hit this wall of silence, and I like have to look, and I'm like, why didn't you remove that? It's so simple. Yeah, it's so simple to remove that, or like you know you have like just bad audio garble, or some people leave it in for you know like a joke kind of like thing, like a yeah. bit. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, if it doesn't, if it's not like a setup bit, yeah. or it's not a recurring bit. It just seems the, like... The awkward silence is actually just awkward. Yeah, it just seems like bad clever. quality at yeah, that point. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, yeah, 95% of Heroclix content creators, I think, fall into the... To be uh, fair, I don't know what all is in this book. Podcasting no, for true. dummies. If it does say, hey, you should edit out any big dead spots, then yeah. If it says, maybe you shouldn't have a crying baby in the background. Uh, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't eat. Don't eat In an audio air. format yeah. and listen to someone chew. Yeah, mukbangs are for video, not yep. for audio. If it says all of that stuff, I would say, yeah. A handful of uh, heroes podcasters probably, and that's not even to say we're better. Like I was, I mean, I just went um 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 uh, 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 and I just like did that like yeah. four times already this show, and we're gonna leave that one in because that one's for for purpose. <laughs> um, but like saying stuff like that is pretty random, like an average human thing. People say ums and ahs and whatnot. That's you know, it's the way it, it goes. And if you want to edit out some big old word flubs, probably a good idea. If you want to edit out some silence, probably a good idea. If you don't want to do that, maybe you should read Podcasting for Dummies, and it might tell you that, hey, maybe yeah. you shouldn't eat while uh, podcasting. The fact that that's the third edition. I will say, like, oh, wow. one of the You're first right. podcasts that I picked Ooh, it up. It still has wired headphones on the cover. Yeah. Ugh, ew, gross, <laughs> gross, gross, ew, gross. The first podcast that I ever started listening to uh, actually started oh, back in, like, 95. No. I didn't, I didn't start listening to no. it in Well, no, I didn't think you did. But no. You were, yeah. But like, and I don't even know how they distributed it. Or if there was like a distribution, like a radio kind of thing. show. But it was at the time it was basically a radio show that you record and then you like upload and people can download. And I don't know how so it a worked podcast, back then. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I don't know how it worked back then hmm. until like there was aggregator sites and you know stuff like that because I didn't get into podcasts until. What 20, is the pod? 2012, 2013. Like the, the iPod. Is that why it's a podcast? A pod. What's the pod? What are hmm. we casting to, Simeon? I don't is it like an iPod? Wow. Is that the I hope idea? that's the first chapter in that's podcasting. That's actually kind of what dummies. I want to know. We've been podcasting. I've is been podcasting what is for, podcast for six years mean? now. I don't know what the pod is. A, uh, is it an acronym? A people on dialysis. No? Podcasting's my grandmother? What? That doesn't mean this. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get uh, this. Person on Dial- non direct casting? I don't know. Distribution? Yeah, some, it, some sort of like distribution casting. Yeah. I don't know. Online distribution casting? Oh, personal people, online, personal distribu- online distribution casting? Mm, we're just this making stuff cast- up now. But. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I will say... I'm sure, this, I'm sure this book has a lot of forbidden knowledge that beyond uh, could use. Beyond my gripes, because I, I do listen to almost every podcast in the HeroClix community. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. But on top of that, I have, I have a ton of time for podcasts, so I listen to a lot. And what I will say, my number one gripe with podcast is is if I have to adjust my audio, mm. like if they if they do a bit in the middle or if they, uh, so like a lot of true crime podcasts, they'll like cut to like um, a recording. interview or something. Oh, yeah, interview. like okay, an cool. interview or something. So like the normal podcaster will sound like this and he says like, blah, 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 my name's this and here's this like recording that I took with, it's an interview with so-and-so yeah. on this date. So I'm just gonna play this for you, and uh, here we go. And then all of a sudden, the audio drops like it's all, sc- 10 it's all scratchy decibels. and just terrible. Oh, oh it, like just, just like the audio level, like the oh. sound level, and like so now I have to turn my headphones all the way up, 
and then when he cuts back in, it's like he's screaming in my ear. Oh, sure, that's Because like his level is his level is like base good studio quality because that's where he's recording. Yeah. And then this interview that was not that, but I'm like, you can still, like, yeah, it'll yeah. It, you'll lose some of the sound quality, but you can still like bring that volume up to like the match. So that's my number one. My number one thing when editing this podcast is I because this is like a personal thing for me. Sure. I want people to be able to listen to it without headphones from their phone, without maxing out their volume, without having to hold their phone to their ear. That's pretty fair. That's something that like... I think that's pretty baseline, understandable. I, uh, the, often enough, I've found myself without headphones for one reason or another, or like my battery dies or whatever, and I still want to play the podcast. Yeah, you still want to be able to hear it. Yeah. And I don't want to have to max out the volume on my phone because I know that if I do that and I still can't hear it, that like that's it. You know, like my my volume's maxed out. I can't I can't go any higher. The podcast is capped, and that's just rough. So that's one of my biggest things. And then yeah, uh, on top of that, just uh, doing like some equalizing kind of stuff across the board, so that like you don't have certain parts that are way louder than other parts is super easy. It's so easy. It's so simple. And I just wish more podcasts would do that because even like the professionally produced ones you'll like run into times where like they've got like a fake explosion like wolverine's like running through a forest and like someone shoots an rpg at him and there's like this fake explosion that's like way too loud for headphone oh, users sure. and then it goes yeah. back to like wolverine's inner thoughts and he's like screen brambled screen brambled screen bram. <laughs> gotta keep running <laughs> like <laughs> and you're just like I mean, yeah probably. my screen's brambled too wolverine I'm i also you, feel Jimmy. that because uh you just blew out my eardrums no uh but, no, other than that, I don't really have a whole lot of no. gripes for podcasting. I will say, the, the only, like, non-Hero Hooks podcast I used to listen to, to a while, for a while, that always bothered me, and this is going to sound weird to some people, but it sounded too professional. So this was, like, a voice acting oh, podcast. Yeah. He was a voice actor that interviewed other voice actors, which was, like, really fun. It makes sense for an audio format. But he started episodes with, hello, I'm... Greg Schnodenhauser, the voice actor of many of your favorite characters. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking with Bill Burr, the voice actor of whoever Bill Burr has been. And he talks like so professional, even when he's in the interview, he's like, really? That's interesting. I get, and I get that he's a voice actor, but he doesn't even sound real. You know, it's just like, wow, tell me more about your childhood and other things you grew, like learning about and growing up in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. And it was just like, it was Boston. always... That must be... A very cultured city. And then they're like, yeah, man, I'm in Boston. It's pretty, you know, like the guests would yeah, just be yes. like, yeah, dude, it's pretty cool. You know, I'm like Optimus Prime and stuff. Like, Autobots rule a lot. Like, I love doing that. You know, like, not that that's how whoever Let sounds. me do my bits real quick. But it's like, man, the host is just almost too professional for like the podcast setting. You want it to be more of like a laid back. And I don't uh, know if that's like going to be something people are going to be like, no, Calder, it should be really professional. I like, think that's, that's was, definitely a matter of taste. But I'm, definitely, I'm definitely with you because... Um, so I listen to a, like a, out of sight of hero clicks. Most of my podcasts are true crime. Oh sure. Then there's like some other like weird jimble jamble stuff that I've like found. Like I'm still subscribed to like the Fallout lore cast, even though like oh. I don't currently play Fallout Fair. and I, I haven't listened Fair to like nice. one of those episodes in a while. But like I, I'm still, you know, I, I find random stuff here and there and I keep it just in case I ever want to like binge it. Right. One of the true crime podcasts that I can't listen to, like, well, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but there's a several that do this, and they do a true crime story, but then they dramatize it, and it's like, oh, it's like one of these studios, like these podcast studios, where they have a bunch of podcasts that like work for them, so like the studio like pays these people to professionally do this and stuff, and it's it's like that, it's like too well done. Where I'm like, I would rather just have someone telling me like with the case and like the facts and stuff. But they do this dramatization thing, and the narrator's like, Herbert walked into the room and looked across. He saw the cold gray eyes mm. of someone who probably could kill a man. But that child was no more than five years old. So when Herbert walked up to him and punched him across the room, <laughs> everyone was shocked. But Herbert said, I've been doing this for long enough that I know a killer when I see one. And it's like that. It's like, I can't take you seriously because yeah. you're talking about murder in this, like, super calm voice. This whatever, yeah. 
And like most people have emotions, and you're just like reading a script, and I can right. tell that. Yeah, and like when it's even though worst. that dude's voice was like in this particular what I'm thinking, of, it was like this uh, almost like Sam Elliott esque kind of oh, like growly, very, very yeah, buttery smooth growl voice. Yeah, though. yeah, it was super good like Ooh, voice, and I, I would love to hear him in more stuff. Around the edges here, but I was like him narrating like so, what they were. So talking. Ponzi schemes come in several ways. Mm. This one came from the top down, and by that I mean. Frank was pushed from the 50th oh, floor. Psh. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, and you're like, oh. And you're just like calm, you're just cool, calm, yeah. collected so about you that. Like, you, you just said right. a man was pushed from the 50th floor and you're just like, you just it's made like, a little like jokey joke. Even just a little, yeah, like you make the joke, there could at least be a little inflection of something yeah, going on like, there versus just the same. I need some level of emotion. And like, yeah. this is like, that's their whole like thing. And I get like, that's all a matter of taste. Some people really like that, and I'm fine. Like, I'm not gonna poo poo you like what you guys like. Right. Personally, that's something I don't like. Yeah. I'm right I, I listen to those, and I'm just like, nope, can't get into it. Another small gripe. The only other thing, and I hope this podcast book cover is, covers it, is how much your podcast detracts from from doing this, especially us. Um, and that's not being Australian, because mm. when you're just not Australian, you have a podcast, your voice just isn't as fun to listen to. No it's joke. Just, uh, yeah. I think it's like it's like strange mysteries or no, it's called mysteries abound. Mysteries abound, and it's a New okay. Zealander. That counts. That's fine too. That's I, okay too. Yeah. So he's he's a Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi. Kiwi. Yeah. Kiwi. Uh, I used to have that on my list of podcasts just to put me to sleep because that dude. Oh my gosh. He had this like soothing kind of like melodic music, and he would just read weird headlines. So it was just like a mum and uh, two children. Went out for a walkabout and uh, Walk. seen something 12 feet tall with red eyes. He said, good day, and uh, flew off back to England. So that's, uh, that's not a Kiwi voice. That's, that's a British voice. It's, but, you know, but, like, that's, the point yeah. was made. The point yeah. was made. But I, I used to listen to that show just yeah. so that, because that guy's voice something was so, so good and so relaxing soothing. about the Australian slash, you know, New Zealandish. And I'm sure anybody who's from Australia or New Zealand would be like, don't you dare say compare our accents to be similar yeah, but kiwi, they're pretty they're pretty similar kiwi privilege is what yeah. i call that oh you wow got, you got the voice that just soothes on you, you have yeah dude so like i used to listen to a like a knife making podcast when i was like super super into like forge and fire there for a while oh, i was yeah. like i better look up a knife podcast they were all australian and they were all like that redneck outback australian swearing like the stereotypical australian like they're swearing left and right oh, just okay. like crazy you know like oh man this bleeping steel wasn't forging you know blah 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 blah. and i was like oh this is so funny i love it you know clicks on the barbie like yeah oh, ben jones man ben jones the the high tier australian accent is so great for a hero clicks podcast literally and then, uh, don't even care what he's talking like yeah even though, you know like, even though he's like talking about hero clicks i'm just like i don't even care i'm just like yeah man i'll listen to any i've, I've probably had four different podcasts that have all just been like australia based with just i'm just like it's just elite it's the best way to that's be. my that's my asmr i don't like the like clicky on microphone yeah the, don't like clicky, whispery stuff don't give me the whole hey i'm your waitress at the I restaurant like, asmr i like soothing uh like even though mm, I'm not going to say statistically Australia is more dangerous. I'm just going to say even though, like, true crime-wise, like, the Australian accent shouldn't be soothing because there is, like, some, like, oh, uh, sure. gosh, what what was that? What do they call that? The uh, the Outback. Like the, the Outback, yeah. There's, like, huge wild, expanses. Crazy animals. Yeah, there's, like, huge expanses of the Outback that are just, like, really dangerous to, like, be alone in or, you know, like, out of gas or whatever. So it's not like that should be soothing, but for whatever reason, that's like that's my uh, oh. particular flavor. Yeah, it is just, just it is just soothing. Puts me it right really to bed. Is. And I would love to visit Australia, but also spiders. Um, they got that spider that like, kills you in ten minutes or whatever. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, um, I'm good. But it's also it'd be cool. I would love. I don't know if they eat kangaroo down there. I want to eat kangaroo so bad. I think I mean, that's. Maybe they do. Maybe they There's don't. There's a guy at the uh, Hutch Fest that had oh horse, horse leather wallets. Okay. Yeah. Oh dang, horse. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. From, I, I I looked at it. I was sir. Those are our friends. the first thing I did. Like I was touching it and I was like, what kind of leather is this? Yeah. Like in, in my head, I'm like, I looked over at the guy and I was like, what kind of finish did you put on this? Because like, I've I've built stuff with leather. I've like worked yeah. with leather. I know this isn't leather. Like yeah. I, like not what I perceive to be leather, oh, which is cowhide. You're calling them out. You're yeah. Like, I was like, what is? It? And he said it's like under the dermis, so it's like not the skin layer. On the, he he referred to it as the horse's butt, 
Very nice. Very Under nice. the skin layer, before like the tough fat, part there's of the like hide, uh, the there's hide. like yeah, thick like layer, and obviously like because horses aren't farmed uh, or aren't you know whatever raised for meat, right? You have to wait till like a horse dies of like mostly natural causes, like whatever, like the until like they're like processed yeah. like that age. It's so, like maybe like the old racing horse becomes a wallet or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I mean, this was a two hundred dollar wallet oh, because dang. like this like leather is like fairly rare. I think it came Pretty from yeah came from somewhere in Europe, but uh, yeah, it was just like extremely thick, extremely high quality, and mm. I can't remember what he said like the finish on it was, but he was like, well, one he said uh, because of like the type of like leather that this is, no two of these wallets would ever be the same, and I was like, yeah, sure. No. I mean, like I, that's okay. the same for leather in yeah, general. Yeah, I'm about to say that's, like yeah. Anything le- like yeah, you make two sets of leather chaps out of the same cow, and they're not going to be the same. Like you know, no, yeah, yeah like come on, man, a fingerprint's different. Like, yeah, you know? uh, but uh, yeah, it was very high quality leather, and it was like very thick. And he said it was like basically waterproof, and I was like, well, the leather might be, but like the wall, it sure isn't. <laughs> like you know, yep, it's uh, not. but it was it was high quality work and really cool. And I was you know I should have showed him mine. I was like, eh, he'd feel too upset. When he saw the beautiful, like, beautiful leather craftsmanship of my silly, wallet, you silly little face. That's you, on your wallet. You that, silly little face. That wallet's not even made out of horse. And be like, yeah, but does yours protect your cars from RFID thieves? Ooh. No, I don't know. no. The next question we have a little more hero clicks related. A little wild. You sit down to record the opening of your DC. Well, so this Alex the Enchanter asks. You sit down to record the opening of your DC notorious brick and or bricks. And discover that the figures within have come to life. Nefarious motives and all. For each rarity, pick one figure that you would most want to encounter and one you would least like to encounter. Uh, so I had the set list pulled up because that would have been really impossible. I think least is super easy for me. Yeah. Anything on here is like, it could kill me. Right. But the deceased chases okay, so could turn me into a we're doing it for each, So we're doing it for each rarity. Oh, okay. Here. So okay. I would say most likely to encounter, I want to chat with my boy Lex so bad. Okay. Uh, least I want to encounter. Ugh, for the commons, if they're just if they're still that small, then I don't really care that much for any of the commons. Oh, okay. You know, if I they mean, were, if they became to big, be fair, I do not want the uh, polar bear or gorilla boss uh, in my house if those become big. We've seen, we've, we've seen toy Superman. Can I would, do. yeah, you know what? I probably not I want mean, to encounter evil Superman. He's gonna make a mess yeah. of the place. But I would enjoy beating the heck out of him. That would be a lot of fun. If he's two inch tall and he's like still, still got all lasers. those powers, and yeah, stuff. yeah, still frost breed, yeah. That's, so I think, uh, number one, I want to hang out with my boy Lex. Probably just don't want him to have to deal with Superman. Yeah. What about you? What's your, what's your common pick? <sighs> I'll go with don't mind seeing Goon. And that's probably OG would have been my OG pick if yeah. Lex wasn't a common. Yeah. Because, like, OG Goon, like, he's got a little money bag. If he turns into, like, regular-sized human Goon, I just, like, knock him out, take his money bag. Maybe yeah. it's filled with uh, carrots or something awful. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Carrots aren't awful, but... Uh, Maybe you know if he and if he's tiny, like what's he gonna do? Then, true, then right? I have like a, I just put him in like you a mason jar. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now you're my goon. Um, one I don't want to. I mean, so I think yeah, I think Superman's like if he's coming after me, that's a terrible. That's option tough. Either way, that's pretty tough. But on top, before that, you know, if that's not the case, then gorilla boss or polar bear are pretty bad. I know a little mini polar bear running around. Hordians are probably like ooh. They're probably close to well, not close to Kryptonians, but they're probably like to me, you know, what a Kryptonian would be to me, a yeah. Hordian would probably be just as bad to me. That being like a human. <laughs> Solomon yeah. Grundy. Ah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Is this, so this is like an Indian in the cupboard scenario, right? Very true. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Let's just go with that and say this is an Indian in the cupboard scenario. So they're able to use whatever they are equipped with to attack you, but they are still at their same scale. I will say, uh, yeah, Omax are pretty powerful too. So I was going to probably choose Omac for Buddy Blank. That's his name. Buddy Blank's a pretty chill guy, but Omac, Omac is very mean. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking of maybe choosing Omac for Uncommon because he is technically like a good guy, I want to say. 
in comics, he's usually like sent out to go like solve a problem, but he just does it in such a horrible way. He's kind of causes a ruckus. Because Buddy Blank, Buddy Blank's a cool dude. Buddy Blank's a solid, a solid man. Uh, Omac, Omac's kind of a jerk. Even if he is kind of like supposed to be like a hero and stuff, he's just kind of a jerk. So I want to say I would choose Omac for uncommon just because the rest of these people would be annoying. Like, who would I actually want to like hang out with? Omac, probably. The rest of these guys. Yeah. It's kind of tough. I think Harley Quinn's super annoying. I don't want her jumping around. Mirror Master, ugh. So help me, put it back where I found him. As soon as he sees a reflective surface, he's just out in the world, and that's terrifying. Starfight is a big no, like period no, no Starfight. It's probably Omac or Captain Cold I want to hang out with, and then I don't want to bring Starfight into the world. So that's one that you just can't, even if he's super tiny, super, super tiny. I was like, no, no mind control, no, not happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think, um, man, I think I'd go with the Riddler for my, like, want to, like, see. You think he's... You think you're just pal around, swap riddles? No, but I mean, if, he, if we're going, if we're going Indian in the cupboard rules, yeah. And he's like, what's he gonna do? He's just a normal guy. That's true. Maybe he'll make like some like finger traps for me. They'd be like, ah, uh, cut you. It took me two hours, but I rigged up this mouse trap to snap you on the funny. nose. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, but more so, I just think like swapping riddles back and forth, and like I get Google on my side, and he's like, that's not fair, and I'm like, yeah, shut up. You're an inch and a quarter tall. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? Um, man, and then I, I really, I have to go with the the highest evil possible as the one I don't want to see, and that's Cyborg Man. Oh, so, <laughs> are you going to say Brainiac? Yeah. No, <laughs> Cyborg. No. Yeah, the, the most <laughs> this evil. This is the highest evil? He's oh, because he's a landlord? He's a landlord. Ah, yeah, of, course, yeah. of course, of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> No, probably the most evil. The one I don't want to again, like Zod is also Kryptonian, so that's even yeah, at, like see, an at first I was like, yeah, me and dangerous. Zod could like make fun of Superman. I'm like, no, Zod hates human beings. Yeah. Like Zod is not a cool guy to hang out with. Not if when Zod was real, being. even at an inch and a quarter, I think he could still terraform the earth. Per- yeah. Just based off of like DC yeah. and stuff. Starfight is terrifying, yeah, no matter I don't. what the size Please is. Please don't, yeah. I don't like mind control stuff. Captain Cold, like I don't know if I could get along with Captain Cold if I could be like, I don't know if stop we could become buddies, ways, you know? and I'll like give you whatever you like, you know, because like a, a penny to him is like a thousand pounds worth of copper or something. So it's I'm true. like, like it's here a is a, a troy ounce of gold, and he's like, wow, wow. I'll do whatever. And yippee, I'm like, yeah, so yippee. stay in my hard hat and just keep my head cool. Oh, nice. But not like froze, freeze, just, like cool. Just, yeah, cold gun, yeah, blasting a- around. AC with the capability of an inch Shouldn't and a quarter. Frost on your head. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, frosted tips. Frosted tips. <laughs> literally frosted, frosted tips. tips. Oh, geez. The rares, I feel like the rares are relatively easy. I think it's a easy pick. I go Polka Dot Man to hang out with. Polka Dot Man feels like, although not mentally stable, a fun guy to hang out with, I will say. And then I think it's definitely don't bring Necron yep. into the world. I feel I like that's the worst option possible. I feel possible. like out of all the rares, Ra's al Ghul is bad, sure. Killer Croc is bad, sure. I just don't I just don't think you bring Necron into the, even as tiny as he would be. I think no, no Necron. Yeah, if Necron, if Necron hit the earth, like my basement's already crowded. I do not need it. Yeah. You know, more standing yeah. bodies. I don't know what you think for rares. <laughs> oh, that was, geez. that was a joke about oh. the body. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, you just let it go. That's fine. Okay, uh, yeah. Wow. No, it just it took me a few seconds. I have to agree. Like, most of these are... Yeah. Even Amanda Waller being, Tuck, like, huh. government I am not bringing Amanda Waller. She, no. More terrifying than, like, Ra's al Ghul. Honestly, you know? yeah. Um, there's really not I don't need a Amanda Waller gaslighting me in my house. Like <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, at an inch and a quarter tall. Like, maybe that's Mr. Still Freeze. Big enough to maybe put, like, Mr. Freeze for, the, for the Captain Cold reasons. Yeah, Mr. Freeze. Look, your you wife's still like dead, that. man. I don't know. It's what like, to tell you. Look, dude, I I have an industrial sized fridge compared to you. Like you can just live in here, keep your wife in yeah, there. Yeah, you'll be doing all, all right. I'm asking is like you do a solid like eight hours a day, keeping my hard hat cool. <laughs> Hang out on my shoulders. Jeez. Nice cool breeze down my back every so often. There you go. Oh, ooh. So, the super rares, I will say, it's easy, Kite Man, hell yeah. Easily, let's bring Kite Man here, let's hang out, let's ball out with Kite Man. The least, maybe it's KMO Prime, 
maybe it's the Superman also from the Super Rares. Because mm. this is the um, actual like evil one, right? Yeah, this is probably gonna be the like, actual evil Superman. And I mean, maybe this Robin King. I don't. Robin I just King's, don't like Robin King. I don't like his look. Robin King's like. I don't know what he from does. The comics, he's yeah, pretty rough, pretty like, pretty messed up. He basically dude. did the same thing that like Batman Who Laughs did to his universe, and then Batman oh. Who Laughs like comes over and so Robin King is not as powerful as Batman Who Laughs, okay. but he has like all the gadgets that can take down the uh, Justice League kind of thing. Yeah, and it, he, Robin King is not like Damian Wayne or one of the Robins. It's uh, it's Bruce Wayne, I believe. No, and in really? that universe, Bruce Wayne is the one that killed his parents. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. so I don't know how he became Robin okay, Bruce. or Robin King, Jace. but uh, he's basically like one of the twisted dimension versions. And so like that, yeah, that's definitely not something that you want because evil Bruce Wayne slash Robin, pretty rough to deal with. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly don't know between him and like, the, like, obviously evil Superman is just like, impossible to deal with that's not something anyone should have to try and no. struggle yeah, that's with true. then uh, so uh, Chase's is like impossible it's Black Lanterns or zombies I feel like there's no cool zombie to bring to life for like you, you'd be looking forward to I don't think there's any one of these chases where it's no. like I guess I'll hang out with you because they're all straight up evil incarnate um Black I Lantern, don't want to bring arrow, in three old Kryptonians. Like, Zod, yeah. and Non, that's letting that... super awful. That might be... I don't know if that's worse than any zombie, but it's pretty bad. I think if I had to choose a zombie, and this is, like, for my technically positive one, it would be Joker and yeah. try to take him out right away, and then... That seems fair. And he'd be the easiest to take I out. I think the likely. easiest zombie to take out between, like, yeah, Hal Jordan, Green Arrow... I guess Green Arrow's on a zombie. Who's a zombie? Hawkman, Joker, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Hal Jordan. Those are the zombies, right? Um, Actually, I don't even think Hal Jordan's a zombie. Hal Jordan's Black Lantern. So, yeah. The zombies are just Batman, Supes, Wonder Woman, Joker, Hawkman. Those are, that's right. it for zombies. And the rest are Black Lanterns. So, I think, yeah. yeah. Joker being the easiest zombie to take out. I'll bring in Joker as my, like, for fun one, I guess. <laughs> and then my one that is, like, this is the worst one to probably bring out. Is it not Superman Zombie? Uh, yeah, he, is he not the most terrifying? Infect, Him or like, Zod or Sanan are like the most terrifying. Yeah, he could, he could just like infect like the majority of the world before. Like, I mean, yeah, he, well, like in in this world, in this dimension, oh. there's literally nothing that could stop. Yeah, him. yeah, literally nothing. Like, quite literally, like you know, we don't we don't have access. To we're done tonight. Or yeah, anything, we're literally so. we're literally done for. Yeah, there's just, like that's just like game over. One and a quarter um, inch Superman is gonna <laughs> ruin the Aquaman, universe. Aquaman like turning. The fish See now stuff. he's got to be one where it's like, don't let him near the faucet, don't let him near the bathtub. Oh my gosh, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. The, um, the beta in the other room just like grows fangs and leaps out at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This Dude, is that's that's it's the toughest a rough category. Set of chases. I think like the the one that I don't want to see the most, I think, has to be the triple Kryptonian. Yeah, it's pretty fair. But at the same time. If they like enslave all of Earth or terraform all of Earth, there'd probably be some people that survive. Whereas the most of the, like most of the other like zombies, there's no way to stop them, You're and then done. they just yeah. Zombie Batman, like deceased Batman, could definitely be stopped. He's not unstoppable. Right, he's, he's um, a guy. Yeah, he's also human, but at the same time, it's just like, do I want to deal with that? I'm not. I'm not gonna like be able to fight no. him. Oh, it'd be really annoying. Yeah. Someone else gotta fight him. I'll be like, hey, I made the best choice. This is the best choice I can make. <laughs> you do. guys fight him, though. Maybe the best choice is to like not go with a zombie and go with like, a Black Lantern because they at least can't spread a, like a virus, right? True. Like yeah, the anti-life geez, virus. But like, I don't. You can't bring. I guess Batman, Black Lantern. I'm not risking Green Arrow or Hal Jordan. Green Arrow would kill me definitely somehow. Uh, Martian Manhunter is like, no, don't bring him to life. Wonder Woman is no. Superman is no. Has to be like Batman for all yeah. Black Lanterns. Has to be one of the like unpowered, dog on like most popular DC character ever, Batman. But like he's the easiest one to take out. out there's only these, yeah, there's like, only there's, four options. This is tough, right? Batman, Green Arrow, Batman, Joker. Those are yeah. There's only yeah. four options that are technically human. Yeah, and by our standards, Batman's not really like a normal human. Yeah, he is. Yeah. All right. Oof. That's tough. That's that's a good question, Alex. That's like actually a really tough one. I don't know if that's here hooks content you guys wanted to hear, but it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun trying to figure out what would be good here. But that's it. 
that's all we have for episode little, little episode 481. We're just getting ready for Worlds. We're getting excited. So like I said, guys, feel free to leave a review. Feel free to write into the show. What do you want to see us talk about on the show? Let us know. Email us at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. We bring in weekly podcasts all the time to you, all the time to your ears. If you want to check us out on YouTube where you can see some weekly videos or the video versions of these podcasts, and by video versions, I do just mean like a static image uh, with some fun sound bars going up and down. Not, We don't actually record us sitting in chairs, so sorry about that. But if you want to see some really cool videos, unboxings, whatnot, fun gameplay, check us out, Dialage for Heroclix at YouTube.com. And if you want to bring some Heroclix figures to life with your magic cupboard, oh, maybe okay. you should check out some figures that you can bring to life at CoolStuffing.com. Not only the latest Heroclix figures... You can get the sealed products, the singles, everything in between at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 to save 5% when you do so. Um, also, if you have one of those magic covers, let me know. I have like some pretty cool action figures that I'd actually like to see uh, come to life. They're not, not hero clicks, but um, some mech warriors and stuff. would be pretty cool. Uh, and if you still have that magic covered and you want to go direct to the source... You can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 to save 10% off of most of your Heroclix orders. It doesn't include Iconics or the Scott Porters, but it will include some of those sweet giveaways they do with bricks and stuff like that. So make sure to check that out. I know they're doing like they were doing a brick for a brick. Oh, they were. Where you yeah, like buy, a free brick of like Fantastic Four or something. Yeah, you, you buy like brick. a. Basically, like a, a modern age brick, and you'd get a golden yeah. age brick thrown in, it's or kind of a silver age brick thrown in. So, pretty good deal. Check them out. Like always, happy trails. So, if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100? That's how numbers work. Over how they, six how people work? think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter.